Hi guys, so we've got a couple of visitors today that have come to visit Mink Land and we're going to take them out on a pest control job. So we have Oliver. Hey, I'm Oliver. I'm a reporter at the New York Times. I follow away from New York City. I'm Kim and I'm local, but I freelance often for the New York Times. So they've come out, they wanted to do a little, uh, little story on us and the mink and how all that works. So we're going to show them around Mink Land real quick, then we're going to go out on a pest control job and see if we can catch something. Yeah, this is Lammy. 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 If there's a mink loose in the yard, they don't they don't hurt each other through the wire. Yeah, okay. And then if you notice, the same thing happens on the inside. It's double wired. Come on in. And you don't want to touch him. He'll, he'll bite you. So they've got, see, they, they can't bite each other through the wire. Yeah. Get a toe or a tongue or a nose right. or lip or something. And then they've got little tubes to play in, obviously a little swimming pool. And then they've got a little tree to climb up. Oh, nice. you see. And then a little nest box up off the ground. And they're not really arboreal by nature. I just do this for, uh, to use all the space I can, right? Give them as much enrichment as possible. Right. Obviously they can climb, but it's not, they're not like squirrels. That's not where they'd be nesting in nature is up off the ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, if it, it's raining or snowing a lot and the, the cement gets wet, it helps keep them dry because okay. you know, the nest's not down it, where they can get it wet. Also, because it's they have to travel so far to it, they're not jumping in the water, swimming around, and then drying off in their nest, and jumping in the water, swimming around, trying, sure, making sure. their nest all wet. So sure. it, it helps to keep their bedding dry a couple different ways. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's spacious because even though they're small they like to move a lot yeah uh, right now it's the heat of the day they're all kind of napping and relaxed yeah. but uh you know when it's when it's cooler time of day they're running around all over the place oh my gosh, yeah. so they utilize every inch of these cages even though it looks big for such a small animal they they use every inch of it. right heck if you turn them loose in the yard they use every inch of it too so they uh, they travel a lot and move around. What did you set this up for the minks? Yeah, this yeah, I built all these. Well, you know, had it built. I designed it and then <laughs> hired some guys to help me put it together. Gotcha. And I just saw the work and they didn't see the work. Yeah, this mink mm -hmm. is is bonded to me, so I raised him from a little baby. You see how he's licking. This is Boone. Yeah. Right? His name's Boone. Yeah. This guy's Boone. And um, I raised him from a little baby. So he kind of considers me mom, I guess. I don't really know what he thinks of me as. <laughs> yeah. But um, mink, uh, when they bond with a human from a young age, well, that's about the only way to bond with them is from a young age. You, okay. can't, yeah. you can't just like decide one day you're going to tame a mink and they'll bond to you. They'll just learn to put up with you, is all. Yeah. Like, and it may or may not bite you, depending on the individual. Yeah. Um, He's actually bonded to me, and you see him licking and grooming like a little yeah. puppy. That's not something you would ever typically see from a, a mink. I should say typical, because there's always weird exceptions. That's not something you typically see from a mink that you tamed, you know, from an adult, or even from a young mink. It, there's a specific kind of line in the sand when they won't, they're not really capable of bonding anymore. And that's, okay. that's about six-ish weeks old. So have you tried it? Like, have you tried to raise them, bond with them? At, at different, different ages? ages? Yeah. And six, roughly, because I mean, it does vary from individual to individual, mm -hmm. roughly six weeks is the line in the sand. Okay. Now, some mink, it might be a little after six weeks. Other mink, it might be like right before six weeks. But six weeks yeah. is kind of the line in the sand. So I typically like move up a week or a week and a half. So get him at like four and a half to five weeks. Okay. So I'm not like pushing the, the limits. Our him, team. I took at like four weeks. Um, I took him slowly because his because he's he's a multi generational mink here. Oh, so okay. his 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 dad and his grandpa and his grandma and stuff were all raised here. Mm -hmm. So we um, I took him in stages. 
So he, I, I started taking him out at like, I don't know, two weeks or something like that, three weeks, and just playing with him and putting him back with his mom, clear up until about four weeks. Yeah. And I weaned him completely. And uh, I actually took all his male siblings and then I picked him at like six weeks. Uh -huh. So I raised them all together and then kind of picked my favorite. Yeah, why? What was about him? He was more confident. No. He was just more confident and high prey drive and confidence. His okay. brother, uh, Crockett, Crockett, he was more driven, but he had a little bit of a nervous tick to him. He huh. had more prey drive and more food drive, but he was a little bit nervous. Not not a lot, just more than him, more than him. Yeah. And so I, I decided on Boone, and because I stopped handling him, he got really Oh, really? Because he doesn't <laughs> fear me. I raised him from, while raised him from a baby, but I put, stopped putting in the time, and he will get me every chance he gets. Even though I bottle raised him, because I didn't continue that bond, it, it actually reverses uh, and gets worse. It got worse. Because he, he now yeah. sees you kind of like, uh, I don't know how to put it. It's like, it's like, so a mink that you tame re retains this like fear of humans to some degree. They learn that they don't need to be afraid of you, but they still have it in the back of your, their head that you're a predator. Mm. Well, he's lost all of that. Yeah. Minus the friendliness. <laughs> so it's just pure aggression. <laughs> right, right. So right. he'll nail me any chance he gets. And, and he's just really driven and fiery anyway. So it's just, he knows you have food, man. He's coming for you. Hey, Bindi. I don't think he wants to play with you, sweetheart. Come on. Uh, so he's the other one we're going to take today, Crockett. Okay. So I don't get bit or have to hassle him. Yeah. I just use a cage. Oh. Okay. I see. So he's, he's taught to go inside the cage and I, I catch him and move him around that way. In all our minks, we try to teach them to come back. So yeah, yeah we teach them to come. come, we just don't teach them to handle because it's easy to teach them to run a cage. Yeah. It's, it takes a lot of effort to teach them to be handled. And I used to tame all my mink, but it's just too much. Yeah. Now I'm just like, I'll just teach them to go in the cage and right. have like one or two that are hand handleable uh -huh. rather than, you know, putting in the crazy hours. I, I don't even know that it's reasonable to keep that many tame, you know? Right. Yeah. Because yeah. they revert if you don't handle them enough. Like him, you know, he was one of you know. So are there other people that do this, or are you kind of like no, one of the really. only people that really knows about? Is this like you just yeah, trial and error kind I of stuff? I trial and error and started it, and then there's a couple people that kind of have tried it, but, but not very many. So <laughs> this is our little pond that we had built for the mink. It's almost more like a mountain stream than a pond. Yeah. Let's see if Crockett will swim for you. There you go. Oh wow. So it's a um, beautiful little place to swim, but then it also has a little uh, muskrat, little artificial muskrat den. Oh wow. Huh. All right. So this stump, can lift it up. Oh, cool. Is that how you train on it? Yeah. So it has how many entrances? Two or three? Three entrances. Three entrances. Oh yeah, there's see, two under. You can see one of them coming up here, that black pipe, and then it wraps around behind these boulders, comes out there by the log, and over here in between these two boulders. So I'm a little worried both of them are really chill. They're not <laughs> in the mood. You might not do too well, but we'll see. Okay, I guess we'll see coming good. They're both just And there was a hot. fish just now there. Oh, was he chasing one? Yeah. Did he have a good little chase? Yeah. Now I'm sure you guys are familiar with YouTube censorship. They've got some serious censorship issues going on in YouTube and their policies are constantly changing. So I created the Mink Man's Exclusive Club where I can share these exclusive videos as well as give you guys a more behind the scenes look at our lives and how we train our animals. 
In YouTube, you guys see one or two videos a week, whereas I'm typically posting anywhere from three to six videos a week on my Mink Man's exclusive club. Now, this club is more than just videos. People can ask me questions directly. They could even send me private messages. I can also share interesting stories that maybe I didn't capture on video. I can share interesting statistics on my different mink or dogs and really just give you guys an inside look on what we do and on my animals' lives. I really appreciate you following me here on YouTube, but if you want to get a behind the scenes look and be able to watch these exclusive videos that YouTube censors out, you'll need to join us on Mink Man's exclusive club.